Do the Avengers pose a danger to society? That was the question, Bruce. That was the question. Did you even check the science? Did you check it was a science? heist, Bruce. No. We were outsmarted. No. The Terrigen reactor was unstable, <sighs> and you knew that, you knew that, and you still paraded it before the entire world. So what? We just give up? We didn't give up, Tony. We failed. At least I can admit that. No. No, we failed him. We failed him. Was good with y'all. It's your boy AD. And to be honest, while Marvel and Square Enix Avengers Day showcase at E3 2019 didn't go quite as planned, big fans of Marvel, me included, see potential in the franchise as the behind the scenes gameplay description from critics has a lot of us hopeful that the best is still yet to be unveiled. Now, for those that don't know about this new Avengers game, it's a multi year, multi game licensing agreement between the company, comic, and movie giant corporation Marvel and the video game publisher Square Enix called the Avengers project. A little more details about this game is that the publisher, like I just said, is Square Enix, but the developers are Crystal Dynamics and Eidos Montreal. Now, I usually don't talk about voice actors for video games, but for this game, it's noticeable that they put more effort into picking the voice actors for certain heroes in this game. So going over the main two popular voice actors, starting with Nolan North, which a lot of people know if you follow video games, because he's one of the more prominent voice actors in the video game industry. Nolan North has worked on nearly 200 video games in the last 20 years and he's voiced some of the most iconic characters in the industry including Uncharted's Nathan Drake and Assassin's Creed Desmond Miles as well as working on some of the biggest and most recognizable titles in gaming. He's definitely going to bring a lot to his take on Marvel's Tony Stark Iron Man which Marvel has him voicing for. The other notable voice actor would be Troy Baker playing the Hulk. Taking on the role of Bruce Banner in Square Enix's Avengers game, he's also another huge name in the realm of video game voice acting as well as playing multiple major roles in the Batman Arkham series and he starred as Talion in both Shadow of Mortar. Moving on to the release date this game will come out June 10th 2020 so for people that was thinking it would come out soon unfortunately this game is going to be under development and won't be ready for launch until next year. The genre for this game is a third person cover based action adventure with the online up to four players you can play multiplayer or co-op campaign to add to the longevity of the game. Main characters of this game will be Captain America, Hulk, Thor, Black Widow, and Iron Man. Now before we get more into the Avengers project, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video while also sharing this to help my channel grow. Now getting back into it, Crystal Dynamics is crafting their very own take on these Marvel characters in the world so they won't be the same storytelling as the characters in the comics of movies. So basically don't expect these characters or their character art to be similar to comics or the MCU. Now the main thing that Square Enix had trouble with like I hinted to at the beginning of my video is is that the battle with the media and with the character designs. Now when the game was first revealed, people went to Twitter to tweet about the character designs and how they felt like this Avengers team was really just a knockout brand of the MCU. Which really, if you're gonna make an Avengers game, unless the costumes are exactly like the MCU, you may get those type of comments anyway. But Captain America's suit, which people called the Riot Officer body armor, was pretty funny as memes online showed him being the fake stunt double for the actual Captain America. So I actually do think that costume was pretty bad but later in this video I will give a reason for why I think it's that way. Also they talked about Thor's weird shirt because he had a lot of circle plates on his armor but that's the usual OG costume design for Thor like in the comics but with MCU it really changed Thor so much that he's really different from his comics counterpart. Also there was a joke about Scarlett Johansson not being in this game as they would think that she would gladly accept the role of acting in a video game. People was also mad that Hawkeye was nowhere to be found in the show Case, which I'm not a huge Hawkeye fan but he is there for a purpose so I do believe he should be a part of the team as he was a part of the main MCU team but as I get into this video you will understand that he'll probably be coming soon and he just probably wasn't ready to be showcased. Now getting into the biggest positive in my opinion about this game is that the free post content which is called DLC will play a huge part in people wanting to keep on playing this game because if you keep getting DLC that you don't have to pay for then that's probably the best way to keep enticing your fan base to 
spend more hours on your game and get more attached to the video game itself. Now with the Avengers project being a gaming service, that means that Marvel's Avenger will have a steady stream of updates, new heroes, villains, and regions to uncover. Square Enix said, we want to keep giving you new ways and new places to explore and new stories. The best thing for us is that we actually add new villains. You can go back and play content you've already gone through, but now it has some new villains in it. And you have a new hero to play that stuff again. So I'm most excited about this game being a game as service model because you don't get that type of format with most Marvel games or for any as far as I know. All Marvel games are usually just a campaign and that's it. But I'm mostly talking as a person who only plays Marvel games on console. So for mobile games, those are also a gaming service. But for the most part, I don't really play games on my phone. Square Enix gave us a lot of information also saying predatory pay to win schemes or loot boxes will be non-existent in this game as they hope to give additional content as they hope for the game to be received well and have a long lifespan. They said that they will have plenty of cosmetic character customization which is what I was alluding to earlier in this video when I was talking about Captain America's costume. I think that's the base and I believe when you keep playing as him you can get different customization options to change up his costume. For the base model in my opinion for a showcase you may have wanted to tweak it and just make it look good for the showcase and then say that that was an unlockable costume but I don't know how they're gonna go about changing up the costumes because it makes me think of Injustice 2 and Mortal Kombat 11 how you get to customize your character and make them different from all the others like let's say you have a Superman you can customize his cape to look a certain color while the other ones still have the original red cape so I feel like I can predict where they're going with these character customization options but you never know I may be wrong or Square Enix might be doing exactly that but getting into what Square Enix had to say about customization options they said you can customize the look you can customize their skill trees expanding upon this he said if you have Black Widow and I have Black Widow I can tune mine differently than yours I'm paraphrasing here but basically he ended it with your widow can play and look differently than mine now one of the last things I wanted to get into is that the possibility of this game being connected with Spider-Man PS4 has a high probability as I think Spider-Man PS4 was the foundation for Marvel building this video game universe as a lot of fans are now giving it the name of the MGU which would be Marvel Gaming Universe and some of the reasons I think that Spider-Man PS4 is connected with the Avengers game is that in the showcase you can see Taskmaster as one of the main villains in the showcase as he's on the front lines as they try to turn Avengers A Day into one of the worst memories that the Avengers would probably have as they were successful in using the tech against them and making the public believe that the Avengers are more trouble than they are health so when Taskmaster and them succeed with the mission the helicarrier along with Captain America goes down and it looks like it takes out most of San Francisco because that's where this celebration is taking place because Iron Man because I think Iron Man made a new power source that he was going to test down San Francisco and it was on the helicarrier when they got attacked they messed with it and it took out most of San Francisco so the Avengers disband and there's a five year that passed kind of like an end game when five years pass and they come back so this game will probably focus on the fact that they have to deal with what they did to San Francisco and also a new villain has come into play so they're gonna have to get back together because they'll only hope to save the people but that's really why I think they're connected with the Spider-Man PS4 game is because whenever you take a picture of the Avengers Tower swinging by a Spider-Man or the first time you take a picture of the Avengers Tower swinging by a Spider-Man he says I wonder where the Avengers are I heard they're somewhere on the west coast and San Francisco is, is on the west coast tower is so cool, but they're never around to use it. I think they're probably somewhere on the west coast right now. But let me know what you think about the Avengers project and do you think this will be a success or do you think it will flop? And which hero will you play first when the Avengers project game comes out June 10th, 2020? So yeah, that's it for the video. If you enjoyed this, make sure to let me know by hitting that like button to subscribe and share this with your friend, neighbor, dog. I just send this to the person across the street playing Spider-Man PS4 every day and night waiting for the next Marvel game because without them, this wouldn't be possible. And with that, I'm out.